From the gases that form it to the rocks around it and more, join me as I show you the history and facts about Neptune. Number 10. The History of Neptune Before we dive into the various facts, figures and numbers concerning the planet known as Neptune, let's first talk about its history and its discovery because it's a little more important than you might expect it to be. Some of the earliest recorded observations ever made through a telescope, Galileo's drawings on December 28, 1612 and January 27, 1613, contain plotted points that match up with what is now known to be the position of Neptune. On both occasions, Galileo seemed to have mistaken Neptune for a fixed star when it appeared close, in conjunction to Jupiter in the night sky. Hence, he is not credited with Neptune's discovery. At his first observation in December 1612, Neptune was almost stationary in the sky because it had just turned retrograde that day. This apparent backward motion is created when Earth's orbit takes it past an outer planet. Because Neptune was only beginning its early retrograde cycle, the motion of the planet was far too slight to be detected with Galileo's small telescope. In 2009, a study suggested that Galileo was at least aware that the star he had observed had moved relative to the fixed stars. In 1821, Alexis Bouvard published astronomical tables of the orbit of Neptune's neighbor Uranus. Subsequent observations revealed substantial deviations from the tables, leading Bouvard to hypothesize that an unknown body was perturbing the orbit through gravitational interaction. In 1843, John Couch Adams began work on the orbit of Uranus using the data he had. He requested extra data from Sir George Airy, the Astronomer Royal, who supplied it in February of 1844. Adams continued to work in 1845 and 46 and produced several different estimates of a new planet. In 1845 and 46, Urbain Le Verrier, independently of Adams, developed his own calculations but aroused no enthusiasm in his compatriots. Le Verrier by letter urged Berlin observatory astronomer Johann Gottfried Galle to search with the observatory's refractor. Heinrich de Rest, a student at the observatory, suggested to Galle that they could compare a recently drawn chart of the sky in the region of Le Verrier's predicted location with the current sky to seek the displacement characteristic of a planet as opposed to a fixed star. On the evening of September 23, 1846, the day Galley received the letter, he discovered Neptune just northeast of Phi Aquarii, one degree from where Le Verrier had predicted it to be, about 12 degrees from Adam's prediction, and on the border of Aquarius and Copernicus, according to the modern IAU constellation boundaries. Chalice later realized that he had observed the planet twice on the 4th and the 12th of August, but did not recognize it as a planet because he lacked an up-to-date star map and was distracted by his concurrent work on comet observations. Think back on all of this. Think about how many people had to look at the sky and try to find this planet. Funnily enough, Neptune is the only planet to have been discovered by math, by the aforementioned charts and predictions, before it was found by I. No matter what though, regardless of how it was found, it was found and the eighth planet of our solar system was eventually named Neptune. This, of course, came after a big battle about what the name should be, but we won't dive into it. Number 9. Orbits and Rotations As you head to the outer reaches of the solar system, Neptune is officially the last planet in our solar system, if you don't believe that Pluto is a planet, and as such, its time around the Sun isn't so much about years rather than lifetimes because one orbit around the Sun is about 165 years. The oldest person to ever live hasn't made it to 165 years, unless you count certain religious tales and the mythological stories, just saying. In 2011, Neptune completed its first 165-year orbit since its discovery in 1846. For a day, though, it's actually faster than its twin in Uranus, because it has a day of about 16 hours. So that right there is a bit of a conundrum, if you will, because if we were ever to make it to Neptune, and we'll get to that, the days on there would be shorter, but not impossible to adjust to. But to try and adjust to a year cycle that is double the average lifespan of a human, that would take some doing, though I'm sure some of you would try and make it work out. Number 8. Seasons 
As for seasons on the planet Neptune, like many of the other planets, it has a spring, summer, winter and fall. It's just that they last about 40 years each and can cause extreme temperature changes to the planet when they occur. The Hubble Space Telescope has actually captured Neptune's appearance as it changed seasons once, a rare sight indeed. Before we continue to detail Neptune and its many facts, be sure to like or dislike the video. That way we can continue to improve to make the best content possible for you the viewer. Also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Number 7. Storms and Spots In 1989, the Great Dark Spot, an anti-cyclonic storm system spanning 13,000 by 6,600 kilometers, was discovered by NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft. The storm resembled the Great Red Spot of Jupiter, and it was large enough to hold the entire Earth within it. Some five years later, on November 2, 1994, the Hubble Space Telescope did not see the Great Dark Spot on the planet. Instead, a new storm, similar to the Great Dark Spot, was found in Neptune's northern hemisphere. The Scooter is another storm, a white cloud group farther south than the Great Dark Spot. This nickname first arose during the months leading up to the Voyager 2 encounter in 1989, when they were observed moving at speeds faster than the Great Dark Spot, and images acquired later would subsequently reveal the presence of clouds moving even faster than those that had initially been detected by Voyager 2. The Small Dark Spot is a southern cyclonic storm, the second most intense storm observed during the 1989 encounter. It was initially completely dark, but as Voyager 2 approached the planet, a bright core developed and can be seen in most of the highest resolution images. Neptune's dark spots are thought to occur in the troposphere at lower altitudes than the brighter cloud features, so they appear as holes in the upper cloud decks. As they are stable features that can persist for several months, they are thought to be vortex structures. Often associated with dark spots are brighter, persistent methane clouds that form around the trapopause layer. The persistence of companion clouds shows that some former dark spots may continue to exist as cyclones even though they are no longer visible as a dark feature. Dark spots may dissipate when they migrate too close to the equator or possibly through some other unknown mechanism. What this really boils down to is the fact that Neptune may look calm and peaceful at times but they have storms that rival what goes on with Jupiter, which makes you wonder what is going on in that atmosphere. Number 6. Atmosphere and Magnetic Field Neptune's atmosphere is made up mostly of hydrogen and helium with just a little bit of methane. Neptune's neighbor Uranus is a blue-green color due to such atmospheric methane, but Neptune is a more vivid, brighter blue, so there must be an unknown component that causes the more intense color. Neptune is our solar system's windiest world. Despite its great distance and low energy input from the Sun, Neptune's winds can be three times stronger than Jupiter's and nine times stronger than Earth's. These winds whip up clouds of frozen methane across the planet at speeds of more than 1,200 miles per hour, 2,000 kilometers per hour. Even Earth's most powerful winds only hit about 250 to 300 miles per hour, 400 kilometers per hour. All this adds up to the fact that living on this world in any capacity would be fraught with problems. We couldn't breathe the gases, and the winds would more than likely knock out anything we put in the upper atmospheres, which is a plan many have for Venus. The main axis of Neptune's magnetic field is tipped over by about 47 degrees compared with the planet's rotation axis. Like Uranus, whose magnetic axis is tilted about 60 degrees from the axis of rotation, Neptune's magnetosphere undergoes wild variations during each rotation because of this misalignment. The magnetic field of Neptune is about 27 times more powerful than that of Earth. Number 5. Pop Culture Even though Neptune is the farthest planet from our Sun, it's a frequent stop in pop culture and fiction. The planet served as the backdrop for the 1997 science fiction horror film Event Horizon. While in the cartoon series Futurama, the character Robot Santa Claus has his home base on Neptune's North Pole. Doctor Who fans will remember that an episode entitled Sleep No More is set on a space station orbiting Neptune. And in the Star Trek Enterprise pilot episode Broken Bow, viewers learned that at warp 4.5 speed, it is possible to fly to Neptune and back to Earth in six minutes, which is something that scientists and people at NASA would love to do. 
For you anime fans out there, in the series Sailor Moon, Neptune was one of the later sailors to arrive alongside Neptune. And in both the original and modern remake, she and Uranus were together. But due to the times, the English dub of the original series had Neptune and Uranus be cousins, which totally wasn't awkward at all for those in the know, and those that didn't and found out afterwards. Number 4. Rings Neptune has at least five main rings and four prominent ring arcs that we know of so far, starting near the planet and moving outward. The main rings are named Gale, Leverrier, Lacelle, Arago, and Adams. The rings are thought to be relatively young and short-lived. Neptune's ring system also has peculiar clumps of dust called arcs. Four prominent arcs named Liberté, Liberty, Egalité, Equality, Fraternité, Fraternity, and Courage are in the outermost ring, Atoms. The arcs are strange because the laws of motion would predict that they would spread out evenly rather than stay clumped together. Scientists now think the gravitational effects of Galati, a moon just inward from the ring, stabilizes these arcs. Number 3. Moons Neptune has 14 known moons. Neptune's largest moon, Triton, was discovered on October 10, 1846 by William Lassell just 17 days after Johann Gottfried Galle discovered the planet. Since Neptune was named for the Roman god of the sea, its moons are named for various lesser sea gods and nymphs in Greek mythology. Triton is the only large moon in the solar system that circles its planet in a direction opposite to the planet's rotation, a retrograde orbit, which suggests that it may once have been an independent object that Neptune captured. Triton is extremely cold, with surface temperatures around minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 235 degrees Celsius. And yet, despite this deep freeze at Triton, Voyager 2 discovered geysers spewing icy material upward more than 5 miles or 8 kilometers. Triton's thin atmosphere, also discovered by Voyager, has been detected from Earth several times since it's growing warmer, but scientists do not yet know why. Number 2. Internal Heating Neptune's more varied weather when compared to Uranus is due in part to its higher internal heating. The upper regions of Neptune's troposphere reach a low temperature of 51.8 K, minus 221.3 Celsius, at a depth where the atmospheric pressure equals 1 bar, 100 kilopascals. The temperature is 72.00 K, minus 201.15 degrees Celsius. Deeper inside the layers of gas, the temperature rises steadily. As with Uranus, the source of this heating is unknown but the discrepancy is larger. Uranus only radiates 1.1 times as much energy as it receives from the Sun, whereas Neptune radiates about 2.61 times as much energy as it receives from the Sun. Neptune is the farthest planet from the Sun and lies over 50% farther from the Sun than Uranus and receives only 40% its amount of sunlight, yet its internal energy is sufficient to drive the fastest planetary winds seen in the solar system. Depending on the thermal properties of its interior, the heat left over from Neptune's formation may be sufficient to explain its current heat flow, though it is more difficult to simultaneously explain Uranus's lack of internal heat while preserving the apparent similarity between the two planets. Number 1. Could humanity ever colonize Neptune? Humanity really does love the idea of colonizing other worlds, but there is a simple problem with doing that with all of them. Some don't have a surface to land on, like Neptune. As noted earlier with Venus, the idea of putting colonies into the upper atmosphere is an idea, but it wouldn't work because of the high winds that they'd have to endure. So what's the solution? Well, to most, it would probably be to go on to one of its moons. This is a similar approach to what people think we can do with Jupiter or Saturn's moons via Titan and other candidates. Having a base on a moon would be productive in various ways, including being waypoints for travel out of the solar system, as well as a warning system for something that could come our way in the future. Another idea is that we could have a space station on the outer limits of Neptune, one that wouldn't be affected by the atmosphere and yet still in the gravity of the planet. Such a construction would take a lot of time and effort to get into place, but it is an option. But given the distance to Neptune, there is no doubt that humanity will want to do closer places like the Moon and Mars or even Titan first. 
Thanks for watching everyone. What did you think of this look at Neptune and the various facts about it? Did you learn something about Neptune that you didn't know before? Do you think that humanity will ever reach Neptune in a way that will help us put a station possibly in its orbit? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.